And for this talk, I have chosen a motto which is shown here in blue. Only those who are prepared to go too far can know how far they may go. And I would, would like to illustrate it with a work of us, and I, of course I want to make propaganda of it, but before that I want to uh, introduce the topics in uh, Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, great discoveries uh, changed the life of mankind. Uh, when gravitation was discovered, that uh, resulted in industrial re revolution, introducing the steam engine and so on. When in the uh, early uh, the, in the late 19th century, electromagnetic radiation was discovered that again illuminated the world, electronic revolution was introduced, radio broadcasting and so on. In the 20th century, when uh, nuclear forces was discovered, this introduced the nuclear age and we are still uh, living in that one. Uh, and we learned the cosmos and uh, energy production increased and many things changed, including, of course, wars. Uh, but in addition, that, there was another discovery in the, uh, the first part of the 20th century, namely quantum physics, which uh, led us to the transistor, to lasers, to digital revolution. We understood the DNA uh, and so on. But uh, the result is that uh, we know the the rules of nature so much that in principle we could forecast the future extrapolating and not telling stories future telling and so on. But there is a big discrepancy, namely that while the, the, the development is exponential, and it was mentioned that mankind doesn't, didn't realize that exponential function can exist, but people are thinking sooner, linearly. And the main problem is, in my understanding, that while we are driving 21st century technologies, we are doing it with 19th century attitude. You may see a car driving with 200 kilometers per hour on the highway, and if you go to the next coffee shop, that, that, drive is parking, that car is par parking there. So we want to get somewhere 10 minutes earlier, but we don't know what to do with the 10, 10 minutes. But there are other interesting things, skyscrapers. Uh, we don't need skyscrapers in order to live. We don't have to bring together so many people to work together. Now we learned it that we can do it uh, even for large distances and still works. But we still build skyscrapers and it's going to remain until this will be the, the sign of prestige. Or when computational technologies were introduced, I myself thought that we are going to lose, use less papers. We have never been using so much paper as today. So, of course, there are such contradictions, and whenever we are thinking about the future, then uh, that the rules of nature are not enough, and therefore social sciences, natural sciences, and life sciences have to work together in order to be efficient. I think that's one of the key elements here in Kursag. Now, uh, my, my observation is that there are really two important things uh, which are driving technological development. One is if we combine different technologies, and I'm going to show a, uh, an example of that. And the other one is when we try to imitate nature. It is called biomimicry. It's really, if you look, how technologies are working, the best ones are, where we somehow succeeded to steal something from nature. Uh, now, just an example, uh, technological development. The first, uh, the, uh, the left-hand side, is uh, some technologies which were invented in the 1950s. Lasers, programmable systems, transistors, atomic clocks, and the DNA was, DNA was discovered. Now it is triviality. What are the issues today? Directed energy, robotics, nanotechnology, advanced computing, inverse environments, biotechnology, just to give a few examples. Uh, the, the development is accelerating. I, I show here three examples. 
Faraday uh, discovered electricity in 1830. It, it, it started to be used in 1881, so means half a century later. Uh, Watson Crick discovered the DNA in 53, and genetics started to develop 20 years later. Uh, Lijima uh, discovered the so-called carbon nanotube. This is a tube of single carbon atoms. Uh, it's one basic uh, material for nanotechnology. And uh, it, he discovered it in 91. And the first logical uh, circuits, say transistors, where it can be used, was invented in 2001, 10 years later. The computing power doubles in 12 months. Networking doubles in nine months. Uh, storage of information doubles in half a year. Uh, we, have, we, are producing in, we have produced in the last 30 years more information than generated by mankind in 5,000 years. So the acceleration is really fantastic. Uh, and now, uh, number one example is the integration of different technologies. Here I show you a uh, uh, layout, uh, I don't go into the details, of the combination of biology and nanotechnology. This is a nerve cell which is put on a silicon structure, and you can do logical uh, things with it by stimulating the nerve cell or the other, the other way around, you can do electronic processes on a semiconductor and stimulate it with biological systems. Uh, the other one, what I want to, uh, element what I mentioned is the imitation of nature. Now, one of the trivial things is sunshine. How does the sun sh uh, uh, produce energy? <coughs> and the sun uses fusion. Fusion is uh, that, for example, hydrogen and another hydrogen atom <coughs> join into a deuterium atom, uh, which uh, uh, is lighter than the two hydrogen atoms. And the mass difference, according to the Einstein equation, E, e equal m times cells, c squared, where m is the mass and c is the velocity of life, is, uh, shows the equivalency between energy and mass. So if mass disappears, it produces energy. This is the basic of nuclear age, and this is how the sun is working. The only difference is that the nuclear reactor, you have a, a heavy atom, and it, it splits into two lighter ones, and this increases the entropy. In the case of fusion, you have two light elements, like two hydrogen atoms, it makes a deuterium atom, or you have a, a hydrogen and a deuterium atom, which join and produce a tritium atom, or if they join, they produce a helium atom, which is already not nuclear, and this decreases entropy. So in fact, this is a sustainability produced energy. Now, one of the uh, uh, solutions what we hope is going to work is the hydrogen bomb, uh, peacefully, where fusion is used, producing energy. And uh, it is based on what in the sun is uh, uh, happening, the sun, in the sun, the gravitational forces push together the atoms. In the middle of the sun, there is a terrible high pressure. Then the atoms are moving very fast. They collide, as join, and produce fusion, new materials, and energy. Now, how is the energy use uh, spectrum nuclear now? The, the upper one is gas, the, then oil comes, uh, then nuclear, coal, nuclear, hydro, and biomass. You may see how proportion they are. Each one is playing a significant role. Of course, in time, there is a shift of gravity between these ones. Now, one of them is the hydrogen bomb, where uh, there are different solutions. One of them is called National Ignition Facility. This is a facility in the United States. Many million dollars were spent on it. Here you see 100, <coughs> 192 lasers. And these lasers are used uh, to replace the gravitational force of the uh, sun. So they use a small hydrogen bomb. They shine 992 lasers on the surface. The surface evaporates. And uh, the reactive force pushes the material together to high temperature. It is 100 million Celsius. 
And then in the middle, atoms collide very fast, atom nucleus collide very fast, and uh, join, producing a lighter atom and energy. So this is the peaceful application, at least hopefully, of, 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 of fusion. Now, the problem with this is that it is relatively low, this process, because this pushing together goes slowly. Slowly means, say, uh, 10 nanoseconds, 10 to minus 9 seconds, but even this is slow, and therefore everything starts to migrate here and there, and uh, this is called really Taylor instability, and this spoils many things. Now, recently there was a sensational announcement, they succeeded to increase the energy production by fusion in this machine uh, 30, uh, 30 volt, uh, but still it is very low. Now I asked my American friends why this mixed sensation is also brought up. I said, oh, now, now is the point to, to improve the, the, the budget of this, uh, this, uh, phenomenon, this machine for the next few years, and therefore now sensations have to be brought up. Anyway, I think this machine is never going to work for energy production, but they, th this machine is used to test hydrogen bombs. It has, has to be tested from time to time, and this is the machine to do it. So anyway, it is going to be finished, finance always. Now, our idea, and that's why I am speaking about here now, is that uh, why we don't combine different technologies, fusion technology with nanotechnology. The idea is that if we have a fusion material that we don't have to squeeze it together in order to get hot. If we use very fast pulses, then these fast pulses go back, back into the material, and there we have nanoparticles which collect this energy, and so it, the, we warm up all the, the, we produce energy in all the volume at the same time, uh, up to that point, uh, where the, the speed of the atoms is already very fast, and they collide and, and produce fusion. Now, uh, this is one million times, this can be done one million times faster than the American one, and therefore we don't need, uh, uh, we don't need 192 lasers, you'd have to have two, and everything would go very fast. We can produce a smaller material, so, so we don't explode Kurseg, but we have very, very, uh, very low explosions. But the Americans can explode this machine once per day, and if uh, this new system works, then we can do it 10 times per second. Now, uh, uh, for that, we use a nanotechnology process which is called plasmons. These are oscillations on metallic surfaces which collect energy shining on it from a large volume to a small volume. And uh, uh, this is one of the uh, advantage of them. The other one is that uh, there is no limit of how small the volume can be. Uh, in optics there is a rule which is called diffraction limit. So practically if you have two points which are nearer to each other than the half, roughly the half of the wavelengths of light, then any optical device sees these two points as one point. In this case, this is not true. So we can down to very small sizes. And uh, we can collect very high ele ele electric fields. That means that we, we can uh, reach a point where uh, the effect is 1,000 times as high as the laser intensity. So we can use a laser, which is x watt, and uh, then uh, uh, we produce an effect which is thousand times higher because of this effect. Yeah, now, we need to conclude hmm? soon. We need to conclude soon. Ah, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, look, here it shows that how this can be collected into uh, small points. But on this, on this picture... Uh, so there's the connection to yeah, this is correct. Anyway, uh, now, here uh, is, we show an experiment. Uh, there is a material uh, where we shot this laser, and you may see a small points there on the light, left hand side. On the right hand side, you see 
very high ones with much lower laser intensity. So this shows that this effect works. Now, let me tell you that with this process, we succeeded. Here it is. Uh, uh, here we show. Here, here is the sample. It is a flat disk shining two lasers. There is an enormous amplification, and there are these nanoparticles in the material, and they produce uh, uh, even fusion. Now, here on this slide, there are bumps on one side and the other one. And this shows the first result, which shows that this thing is working. We produce from hydrogen deuterium. And these bumps here are the bumps which are due to deuterium present in the material, although originally there was nothing. So that makes us hopeful. And uh, this may lead to something what is really uh, sounds comic. There was an announcement 20 years ago or so, which was called, um, called fusion. Everybody was laughing on it, including me. Now, this uh, slide shows a figure, which is taken from a NASA uh, uh, publication, where they develop, on the basis of this, now it is called low energy nuclear reaction, uh, engines for aeroplanes. Here, uh, on this one, a car is shown, which is uh, uh, from a Japanese publication. They produced the company Nado. This were the big uh, the Japanese car manufacturers uh, and, uh, and the Japanese state. They produce, uh, they want to produce en engine uh, elements, driving ele energy sources for cars, claiming that one liter of water would be enough to drive the car for one year. Now, of course, there is a lot of security behind it, the, your, your secrecy, a lot of doubts. I have myself also doubts. There are many questions which have to be open, but the principal situation is that, and this is shown on this figure, what I showed you, that the process is realistic and reproducible. Now, since I have to conclude, I can't go farther. There are other things, when we use two lasers, then we use the collision of two type of atoms. This is an additional source of, of uh, producing the necessary velocity that in order that atoms should be able to, uh, to collide. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have time to speak about that. And so my conclusion is I refer to Einstein. Einstein said that the problems we are facing today cannot be solved with the same way of thinking by which we created them. Of course, creativity means that damn new ideas and to be brave, even if many people, the majority, think that it cannot be solved. If you look into history, how big developments were made, usually that was the basis. This is why creative scientific thinking is the key to our future. And this is why I have chosen the motto shown at the beginning of my talk, which unfortunately was made much shorter than I was. Thank you, Norbert.